Hello, everybody, and welcome back to The Six Podcast. This is a weekly podcast where we talk about news, events, uh, things going on in the Rainbow Six community. Uh, with us this week is our good friend, Icy Cat. How are we doing today, Icy Cat? Not too bad. How are you doing? I'm doing quite well. It's been a while. It's been a while. Um, last we spoke, it was of uh, back when the Italian operators were kind of... Uh, a, not confirmed there was a lot of the leaks um we had an idea of what they were going to be because their art got leaked and their their loadout kind of got leaked but we didn't know what 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 was what uh but now we're it kind of all in the know now the tts is out uh all the new operators are there everybody's had a chance to play them or mostly everybody's had a chance to play with them uh i know you have uh what is yeah. what are what are your thoughts on uh the operators right now we're going to go into specifics in a second uh we're going to be talking about maestro today so i just want to know your thoughts on where he stands uh in the meta and from gather gather some information from what you've played my opinion on maestro is i really think that okay so if you remember when velvet shell first launched like mira really shook up the meta we'll gloss over the fact that her mirrors were breakable from the opposite side for the first month. But other than that, like the way she impacted the game and now like everybody plays mirror like that. I mean, she's like a core operator for pro league strats, you know, having that extra Intel available. And I think Maestro is kind of like the, the next kind of operator that's like that, where he's just going to like shake up the core meta a lot. Yeah. Like uh, from what I've seen, it seems his gadget's, kind of sci-fi but they're kind of going towards that like you can't not you know there's only so much you can really do in the realm of reality uh this laser that does uh you know five damage per shot does about 20 shots before it overheats um yeah it's it's all it's like a mirror window that you can place on anything technically it's an indestructible uh camera camera yeah. slash turret system yeah okay yeah uh, indestructible camera uh, I think it's got the nickname the Space Helmet or something along the lines of that right now. Well, unofficially, I've heard Space Helmet. I've heard Cat Astronaut Cap, uh, you know, a few other things. Um, I mean, it's but the in-game designation is the Evil Eye Turret. Yes, the Evil Eye, um, which is an amazing name, by the way. Uh, but yeah, it's this turret. He gets two of them. He can place them in hallways, walls, uh, any sort of corridor. And it just, like, gives you intel on where they are, what's going on, and then when they're not looking, you just start zapping them with this this high-intensity laser uh, from the looks of it. Um, now, what are your thoughts on the gadget itself? Because, in my opinion, it seems at this present time, not overpowered, but in the sense of um, it, it does five damage, which I feel is a lot. Yeah, and so, okay, it has unlimited ammo, right? And yeah. if you have, it, underneath the reticle, there's like this this heating meter. As as you shoot more, the, the charge builds up and it overheats. And uh, then it, it can cool back off again. And that's how they sort of deal with the fact that it has unlimited ammo. However, if you are firing this at a player, it does five damage, like you said, per shot. And they give you just enough uh, range in there before you overheat that you can down a fully like a player with 100 health if every shot hits them right when you overheat you will down that player um so five damage seems like it's not and it fires really fast like it's quick do you think that's going to be fixed like because right now it's all in tts which everything can be adjusted which they've done before like i think i'm not going to sound like one of those people it's like it's broken it's going to break the because i don't think it will i don't think it is um but I think maybe five damage is a little bit much. Like, I don't feel it should be a gadget that can kill unless, like, you have to really put the effort into it. Like, I think two damage to three damage would be very sufficient to get somebody moving, uh, especially with how fast it fires. Too. Yeah. Like, you can't kill it. I guess that's 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 the other part, right? Once it's opening and it's shooting you, you can destroy it. You can turn around, shoot it, and and go from there. But if you're if somebody who has this gadget is really good with it they can get two three four shots on you close it up so when you turn around it's closed and then you turn around again it gets two three you know what i mean like somebody who's very experienced with it can really troll you and it can really probably be the most frustrating part which i guess that's that's his main ability is to 
irritate the operators enough so they move and go to somewhere else and, uh, and push I would say it? his main function is to really be a anti objective uh as far as far as an anti breacher for the objective so the function of his turret isn't so much anti personnel as it is anti gadget so when you put up that thermite charge that breaching charge that fuse cluster charge you know the the hibana pellets his gadget is meant to disable those devices yeah uh so that's what his role should be and i think dialing his damage back down like you talk about like two or three damage that's probably good um, because that would allow him to focus more on the equipment destruction. And when you combine the fact that he's already got this like bulletproof Intel camera, that's already a very useful feature. Like even if he, he didn't have this turret that could shoot a laser, a uh, bulletproof yeah. camera that you can control that way is very useful in and of itself. <laughs> Which yeah, a hundred. Yeah, exactly. Like, I don't know why, I don't know what the sudden fascination with bulletproof cameras, because with the, the launch of Operation Parabellum, we're getting Mute, Frost, and, and uh, there's three other operators that are getting this bulletproof camera that does vaguely the same thing, but it obviously it doesn't shoot and it doesn't it doesn't rotate. It's just a fixed camera. So do you feel that his maybe his, because uh, like, his does the exact same ability as that one in a sense of, of gathering the information with a thermal camera because these cameras are now thermal. Yeah, they can even see through smoke. Both yeah. of them can. Do you feel that's do you feel that's maybe pushing a line, or is that do you feel that's ba- a welcome balanced change? I yeah, so it's gonna depend a little bit. I think it was good that there's a camera that can do it, but I think having the deployable camera that six different operators can pick, having the same functionality as Maestro's turret as far as being indestructible and uh, seeing through smoke is a little bit too much redundancy. Now, the bulletproof camera, you can actually kill it from like a a little bit on the side or if you walk up to it and melee it so those deployable ones can be taken out a little differently. But, you know, again, we have a meta that is, if you take a certain mix of operators, you know, going like Echo, Maestro, the various operators that can deploy these cameras and Valkyrie, you can have over a dozen cameras in the mix not even including the default map cameras yeah like my that bringing up valkyrie is a good point like that was another thing because i'm a valk i love using valkyrie i'm one of the i I wouldn't say i'm a valkyrie main but i'm definitely in that that plateau of a valkyrie main she's one of my most used operators does this make her redundant like what's the point of taking her if, if redundancy is a planned feature in the game. I mean, if you remember, they talked about their vision of having 50 to 100 operators of the lifespan of the current existing game. And they said that redundancy is planned. It's to be expected because they want to have alternatives to operators. You don't want to feel like, oh, I've always got to take a mute because he's the only one that can do the job. Oh, I always got to take a thermite because he's the only one that can do the job. So then you would have things like Hibana being introduced. Well, now thermite isn't the only one that can do that job and it gives you variety, but it mixes it up so that Hibana doesn't do, she does the same job, but she does it in a different way. And so I think Maestro kind of does the same thing. It's like a Valkyrie or an Echo in that his camera can gather intelligence, but it does it in a different way and his gadget offers a different set of features now yeah uh, it would do that but like do do you think it has to be thermal because like again bringing it back yeah redundancy is planned we 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 understand that aspect but would it be beneficial to bring valkyrie maybe on to that level or or dumb down maestro to to her level in a sense of like maybe make his thermal not as powerful or make valkyrie cameras thermal or slightly thermal something something that's it, it yeah there's a variety but it keeps everybody within a valid pick so like oh i don't need a maestro here i can pick a valkyrie rather than being like oh well valkyrie's a pretty crappier version of maestro i'm just gonna pick maestro anyways you know what i mean it does like rather than making one better than the other and and creates choice it creates reason to pick the characters and as to the strategy would it not well i think that already exists so so if you're taking a look at the maestro versus uh valkyrie example for instance i mean he has two cameras not three he's limited to placing them on either vertical or horizontal surfaces she can throw them up onto the ceiling or into small areas that he can't deploy his camera um So there's definitely differences. You know, she can toss them outside of the building while still staying safely inside the building to do so. He can't do that. 
Uh, I think that his gadget does need to have the thermal capability on it if you understand the intention of why his gadget does what it does. Mm -hmm. If his gadget is meant to be deployed on the outside, not the inside, the outside of an objective room and defeat those breaching devices as they're placed on walls, having that thermal capability is somewhat integral to that because – if he doesn't have that, then all you have to do is have like a smoke or whatever, deploy the smoke grenades against the wall. Thermite runs up there real quick and the turret can't see this happening, so he can't do anything about it. And now his gadget can't be used as that, you know, anti-gadget breaching, you know, intention that it yeah, has. Uh, yeah, it, it, okay. Yeah, okay, now that makes sense. I, I, did, I honestly didn't even think of it that way, although I've been watching a couple of videos where people put it outside and, um, for example, on border, on the, on, um, um, armory wall they'll put one just on the outside of there and it just kind of creates a little bit of hesitation with the attackers and especially if you're playing ranked you know you got three minutes you can't have that hesitation so um yeah okay now now i kind of get it now i now i see that yeah he might need that now uh lastly before we move on to what he brings to the table uh weapons wise do you how do you see his gadget like you mentioned it being an anti um gadget uh, device where do you see it being the most useful like you said is, do you feel it's best used outside or can there be spots on the inside that is probably more useful like do you or is it one of those balanced ones where it can be used for both like which one do you feel well i think with him having two then it, it can make sense to put one in and one out i would say if he only ever had one i would primarily focus on placing it out the reason, though, that it's risky to have one inside the objective is, of course, because they are vulnerable to Dokubi. And so if she takes it over, then you have eyes, a bulletproof set of eyes in the objective. So that's kind of harsh. Yeah. But um, aside from that, you know, it can be used like if, a, if somebody tries to plant the diffuser, you can disrupt the animation for them doing so. And so, you know, it has its uses inside the objective. But... I really think he comes into that strength being, you know, preventing them from even getting into the objective, at least through breaching intentions anyway, in the first place. For his weapons, though, like you were mentioning, I think that they're designed to complement his play style in that way, too. He's a heavy operator, and he's got a gadget that he's designed to sort of sit on, kind of like how Echo does to a certain degree. Yeah. So he's he's a, he's a big, heavy guy. He doesn't move quickly. And his gadgets uh, – I'm sorry, his weapons really support that with that LMG, the first defender with an LMG. Ooh. You know, I mean, Tachanka has that one, but of course he's fixed to one spot. And, yeah, that's – I'm, I'm in the process of doing a, a comparison video for those two, and I was actually going to talk to you like what are your thoughts on the lmg being on defense because i'm actually quite excited for it i don't i was a little i was a little hesitant but then i seen gameplay of it and i was like actually that looks amazingly fun and it seems very, like it seems like a very balanced thing to do um with all of his weapon loadout is amazingly fun i will give you that i think it's a little strong having an acog on the uh on the lmg though that that's it's a little bit yeah. beastly like I, <laughs> it is a bit beastly and especially with the hip fire too like that hip fire is ridiculous like i see people just getting headshots down the hallway and they're just like you know tap firing hip firing those things but it's meant to do that i believe in the in the description of the gun it actually is supposed to have a good hip fire accuracy and that's probably to, to complement the play style of him being in a close quarters, uh, more stationary style, I'm assuming. That's yeah, that's what they've said. Mm -hmm. uh, but I mean, let's also not forget that he's got that automatic shotgun, which just uh, it just deletes walls from existence. <laughs> I see it's crazy. That. I, see I mean, that. it's a shotgun you can actually successfully pre fire with. Mm -hmm. Um and it's got 31 rounds, which is abs – I wasn't expecting 31 rounds. I was expecting like 15 or 20 maybe at most, but 31 rounds. And, yeah, I did pre-fire an automatic shotgun. And it's automatic, right? It's not like a fast-shooting semi-automatic. No, it's fully automatic. You hold down that trigger, and it'll it'll fire them out. Now, of course, it doesn't fire as fast as an SMG. No, no. But – it's pretty damn quick. <laughs> yeah, and then that pair that with the bailiff, which is the the, the bailiff the four ten uh, shotgun revolver, which is it's it's on par. It's more of a um, more mobile more mobile version of Mira's gun in a sense, where you can shoot out hatches, you can shoot out you know little little um, sight lines with the gun, and then uh, you know go from there. From what I understand, though, it's not an actually fantastic gun to get kills with because it's pretty, no it's pretty really weird. not what i've found with his loadout is that if you're going with the lmg it's best to pair it 
with the bailiff because then you can make your own murder holes and then use that with the LMG successfully. But on the other hand, if you're taking that auto shotgun, while it is a beast up close, you just don't have any range. And his other revolver is very accurate and mm-hmm. packs a punch of its own without being like, you know, the more like I really look at the bailiff as being more of a tool than a weapon. And then I look at his other revolver as being more of a weapon that makes up for the shotguns, you know, like it's damage fall off and it's just range limitations. Yeah. And, and I believe the revolver, the, not the bailiff, the other one is the only revolver that can be suppressed. If I'm not mistaken, you can suppress it. Uh, don't get me started on that. It's technically impossible to suppress a revolver because it has an open cylinder that gas leaks all out of. You'd have to have a completely sealed cylinder, which that does not have. No. But regardless, in the game, yes, that is what they did. Well, Rainbow Six has been kind of veer. It isn't based off of realism if we take a look at these operators. For example, Maestro, he's got this thing that shoots lasers at you and it does damage, right? I don't believe there's anything out there that can do that. So There uh, is. They deploy them on battleships and they're meant to shoot down cruise missiles. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> not people. There's it's just, you know what I mean? Like, Jaeger's device technically can't can't exist technically i shouldn't say it ever will but you know what i mean like little things like echo's drone i highly doubt there's a room out there that can attach itself to the ceiling and make you go crazy halfway through like just little things it's 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 a bit on the unrealistic side but that's what makes the game fun right like it's on that cusp of being slightly real they make it, it they make it in such a way where it's plausible. believable it's believable Plaus- possible yeah. it's believable but um so with Maestro being the way he is, he's got his LMG, he's got the auto shotgun, he's got his two revolvers, he's a three armor, one speed, and especially with the buff that's coming to the three armors and the nerf that's going to the, or yeah, and the, the nerf that's coming to the one armors, um, he's going to be a very, very um, interesting operator to come against when it's like a 1v1 or, or even, you know, it's a 2v1 or something. He's With that LMG, he can, he can spray you down pretty quick. What operators do you feel are like not not the direct counters because we know you know Thatcher IQ all those things. Um, what operators do you feel that they didn't mention that will be beneficial to use with him, and which operators do you feel that are going to be the best or one of the better counters that they didn't mention? Well, I feel like he's going to suffer from a little bit of the problem that Tachaka had because so, I mean Tachaka's big thing is he's in one spot so that it's easy to take him out, right? Well, if he if Maestro is on his gadget, he's also fixed in one spot, a little bit like Echo that way, too. Mm -hmm. Right. So they share that capability that if he's on his gadget, he's immobile. And so, like you said, you want to stay away from the obvious direct counters, which are like the Dokabi and the Thatcher and the obvious direct ones. Yeah. But uh, if you have somebody that's kind of like not able to move while they're using their thing, um, a Jackal is going to be great for that. Now, he might not have run out of the objective for you to get his footprints, but if you could just bust up the ceiling or the floor, and like we've seen that technique sort of coming out, like where you get below the objective, you fire a shotgun into the floor, you know, up above you, yeah. and then you can see their footprints and just reverse scan them that way. I mean, then you're going to be like, uh, I guess it wouldn't be wall banging, I guess it would be floor banging yeah. uh, for Maestro then when he's in that locked position while he's on his turret and not expecting it. That could yeah. be very useful. That's exactly what I was thinking. It was Jackal's a good counter. Um, again, all the obvious ones: Thatcher, IQ, Twitch uh, is another obvious one. Um, but sledge I- also super super useful for countering him. He can one hit melee with the sledgehammer, the only melee attack in the game that will take out the cameras. Yeah, which is I think I, that's kind of funny. That's that's kind of cool. Uh, I, honestly, when they showed that, I was like, oh, that's kind of an interesting little. Ner- like an, an interesting counter because when you think of something like that, you're like, oh well, you know. Just throw a Thatcher ball at it and and things like that. And those things, a Thatcher and a Twitch, don't destroy it. They only disable it, similar to the Yokai. It's just, it stops it. It doesn't kill it, though. Right. So, what are your thoughts on uh, defenders that can be paired with them? Um, Well, he's going to obviously complement any Intel operator. Uh, So, you know, your Valkyries and your Echoes or whatever, I mean deploying even more eyes in the battlefield is of course going to be an asset to the team that would be a nightmare uh, an echo and a uh maestro you get zapped yeah. and you get drunk at the same time that's gonna be a freaking nightmare he can also pair up in interesting ways 
with Mutant Bandit, if you think about it, because their primary role is to go ahead and block off those walls from those breaches. But now he can do that from the outside. And so he might be able to free up a wall panel or two that Mute or Bandit used to have to cover and maybe allow them to cover other areas instead. You know, the, the Bandit juggle, it may not be so necessary if you've got that Maestro turret on the other side of the wall. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Um, My- uh, sorry, continue. I was just going to say, there, there's also like um, other trap operators that can benefit from him uh, as far as uh, having that extra set of eyes. You know, so if you've got, um, you know, maybe you've pre-placed a smoke grenade or a C4 grenade and, you know, you know, that maestro can tell you they're watching that doorway. It's a bulletproof camera, so they can't get shot watching it, even if the, the attackers can see that they're on the camera. And then you could say, OK, you know detonate that grenade or detonate that c4 charge and you'll have that timing to kind of assist that trap operator too yeah I, one i was thinking was frost like if you have a maestro near a, a heavy uh, i don't know like a heavy traffic zone then you can put a frost trap in in somewhere like again near a window or thing again not not taking the maestro out of the play but keeping it in a spot where it's still viable but if you have a frost trap there, they get down with the frost trap. You just zap them to death, and there you go, right? It's a li- it's it's a one time use type thing, but uh, I feel that it would be. I think that would be a good pairing. That and lesion. Yeah. Yeah. So, so with those that being said, though, uh, I think we've reached our time. We're just talking about Maestro today. Uh, thank you for coming on. Uh, we'll yeah. be talking next time. But next time we're going to be talking with about Alibi, uh, the other Italian operator. So, but until then, we'll uh, talk to you guys later. Thanks for listening, guys. It's been great, and we'll see you next time.